tried real hard, but it took too long. This is not a feminist song, because we were scared we would do it. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca, and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 SNL music videos. We're closed. Okay, we're very beats. Uh-huh, we can vote in peace. Sorry, this one's also closed. Who's got the bags? Everyone else gets at the back. Yeah, we coming first like we always do. We're jumping in front of you and you and you. And the prices go up and down, you see? So that explains an NFT. For this list, we're looking at Saturday Night Live sketches that often spoof a musical genre in the form of a music video. So, did we include your favorite SNL music video? Let us know in the comments. All right, let's get into it. Number 20, Crucible Cast Party featuring Lynn manuel Miranda. After taking their bows on the final night of the school play, the cast prepares to... And we're gonna rip it up all night until 11.45. There are a lot of hormones spilling everywhere, but no one really knows how to act upon their urges. Instead, what we get is a delightful list of stereotypes that will make any theater kid watching feel extremely seen. Everyone gets a chance to shine in this highly entertaining skit, but Lin-Manuel Miranda rapping as experienced senior Cody Shuck is a particular highlight. However, it is the spot-on references that speak to any theater kid's soul that make this sketch so memorable. At the Crucible cast party. Number 19, On the Couch. She said I'm out too late. She pushed me away. There ain't nothing in the world that I can say. So I'm sleeping on the couch tonight. In this smooth R&B jam, three guys played by Kenan Thompson, Chris Redd, and musical guest The Weeknd lament over the minor indiscretions that landed them in hot water with their partners. They really do an excellent job of painting themselves as the victims, which is why these subsequent revelations are so hilarious. Make dinner like lovers do. I pour her wine and I'm sleeping on the couch tonight. She got me on the couch tonight. Turns out that their misdemeanors are much bigger than they initially let on. Cheated on me almost every day. True. I caught you cheating on me yesterday. You did. You even cheated on me on my couch. Yes. And that's why your ass is in the doghouse. Keenan is a serial cheater. Chris committed financial fraud. And The weekend? Well, we'll let his ex and her new husband, played by Daniel Craig, explain that one. You really gotta stop coming over here. What? You really can't keep coming here, bud. I, I know you don't really have a place to stay, but we we got kids. It's the unexpected twists that make this song so unforgettable. Number 18, Tiny Horse. Who knew that Timothy Chalamet would bring us the musical saga we never even knew we wanted? There he is, my tiny horse. And he's going away, yeah. They're taking him away. This song chronicles a guy who's gutted when his family is forced to sell their farm and he has to part ways with his animal bestie. At first, Tiny Horse doesn't want to leave, but Chalamet has us in stitches as he yells for him to get. I said get! Run if you know it's good for you! Get! This is only paralleled by his epiphany that he's been holding Tiny Horse back. Chalamet's dedication to this sketch is Oscar-worthy. No, Pa. I can't. That tiny horse weren't ever mine to begin with. That tiny horse belongs to the world. It's a happy ending, though, as we watch Tiny Horse gallop away on a regular-sized horse. Number 17, Boombox. Together with The Strokes' Julian Casablancas, The Lonely Island offers a cautionary tale about the power of the boombox. Everything got out of control. The music was so interesting. Everyone got out on the floor. They take us to three relatively mundane settings, where Andy Samberg unleashes utter chaos as he raises the boombox above his head. So many types of people, they'll never get along Till I bust out my boombox and play this song This includes a totally random running gag about a boiled goose, everyone wearing fingerless gloves, and I saw a Spanish guy doing the bar 
As with many Lonely Island songs, you'll find yourself wondering what on earth you just watched, while still enjoying every moment and laughing out loud. Well, I guess that's the power of the boombox. Just don't forget that a boombox is not a toy. Number 16. NFTs Ever spent hours scrolling online in an attempt to understand NFTs? Now what the hell's an NFT? Apparently cryptocurrency. Everyone's making so much money. Can you please explain what's an NFT? Well, look no further, because SNL has your back. This parody of Eminem's Without Me sees Pete Davidson excellently parodying the real Slim Shady to ask the question on everyone's mind. Chris Red responds with an admittedly entertaining verse explaining cryptocurrency. The thing about NFTs is However, if you're anything like us, you're probably left just as confused as before. Don't worry though, because the janitor, played by Jack Harlow, saves the day with his verse, which is both rather catchy and genuinely informative. Hey, here's the thing about NFTs. It's a non-fungible token, you see. Non-fungible means that it's unique. There can only be one like you and me. Turns out this sketch isn't just funny, but it's educational too. Number 15. Back Home Ballers this may be their house, but for the next four days, we about to run this bitch. Almost a year after their first Home for the Holidays music video, the ladies of SNL were back. This time joined by host Cameron Diaz, they rap about being treated like royalty when they go home for the holidays. Cause I'm a back home baller, if I want something I just holler. I do what I want and I get what I want cause my parents miss their daughter. They enjoy perks such as a fully stocked fridge, vegging out while watching TV, and not lifting a finger. And who can't relate to a 30-character long Wi-Fi password? Getting free Wi-Fi like a dope-ass hoe. The password starts with 17 O's, then B45 LTMG, then capital X, then 333. However, nothing makes us laugh harder than Leslie Jones rapping about infinite amounts of bowls. I'm up to my ass in bowls, bowls all type of bowls. <laughs> This sketch only reminds us just how talented these women are. These kinds of sketches should become an SNL holiday tradition. See you in a month for Christmas, we doing this all again. Number 14. The Christmas Candle Popular culture has introduced multiple Christmas saviors over the years. She doesn't know what Jen likes, and she doesn't super care. So she goes inside a closet just to see what crap's in there. But now, Emma Stone, Kate McKinnon, and A.D. Bryant have one more to add. They sing this ode to more powerful Christmas savior in a vaguely 90s-esque power ballad. She takes the candle, dusts off the candle, then wraps it up for Jen and just says, their commitment to the sketch is what makes it so memorable, and their sincerity only makes it funnier, especially when AD delivers her warning. But here's a warning when you give the candle, that is all that you need. Don't pair it with the lotion or some lame little cream. Ultimately, there's nothing more amusing than the chorus of women uniting to give thanks to the ultimate present the gift of having a gift to give away. After this, you will never see the Christmas candle in the same way again. Number 13. Murder Show If self-care to you means unwinding in front of the television and watching a true crime series, this is the sketch for you. Murder show, murder show, every type of murder show, late night true crime, this is my relaxing time. After all, there's nothing quite like descending down the rabbit hole of shows about murder, right? And don't forget those podcasts either. As soon as I'm done, it's all sung to a peppy tune that is guaranteed to get stuck in your head. Perhaps you agree with Nick Jonas, though, and think that it doesn't get much better than cult shows. Have you heard about cult shows, cult shows, different kinds of cult shows, where we're sex and ugly dudes and a bit of volleyball? 
more. Maybe you identify more with Melissa Villasenor and baking shows are your jam. Murder shows and cult shows and don't forget baking shows. <laughs> what? I like baking shows. Is it possible to be a fan of all three? Number 12, Bottom of Your Face, featuring Megan Thee Stallion. You got your mask on, trying to be sad. I can get lost in your eyes all day, FaceTime all night. Here we go to sleep, just talking about everything. During the COVID-19 pandemic, no part of the anatomy was more mysterious than the part hidden behind the mask. In this hip-hop parody, featuring musical guest Megan Thee Stallion, three guys rap about their desire to see the bottom half of their date's face. What's up? <laughs> However, the women clap back with why going maskless is a stupid idea. They even managed to throw in a WAP reference for good measure. Chris Rock then enters the scene with his own hilarious take on the subject as well. It's incredibly catchy and kind of relatable for anyone trying to navigate the dating world during the pandemic. Number 11, Loco, featuring Bad Bunny and Reggae John Page. Quarantine fatigue hit us all, but if you're single and living alone, it hit particularly hard. Ego Nuotum arrives at the club looking hot and starts chatting up a guy, played by host Reggae John Page. Step to him like, yo, what's your name? He said, I'm not real, I just live in your brain. Wait, what? No, you're real, and I'm a bad bitch. No, you're alone in your stone watching Hitch. It's been a whole year since a dude touched your butt. That's where things take a sharp turn as we discover the havoc that a year in quarantine can play on the brain. And I'm loco, as in my brain done broco. But hey, you either laugh or you cry like Coco. It started Poco, bacon bread, Tiger King. But a whole year on Zoom, I'm like girl from the ring. We're then introduced to her best friend, Reggie, a tenacious snake plant that urges her to keep going. According to costume designer Jill Bream, snake plants share humans' determination to survive under pressure. At least this song was so catchy it kept us company through our quarantine fatigue. Number 10, YOLO. Back in the early 2010s, Drake released The Motto, and suddenly everyone was saying YOLO. But it seems like The Lonely Island, joined by Adam Levine and Kendrick Lamar, interpreted the acronym a little differently than the rest of us. This rap is a caution about living life carefully and being hyper-aware of any potential hazards. They even reference some real examples of newsworthy recklessness. What's hard to believe about this 2013 song is how some of its lyrics about isolation, quarantining, and never having too much Purell rang especially true in 2020. And here's another piece of advice. Ultimately, the moral of this rap is you oughta look out, or YOLO for short. Number 9. This is not a feminist song. But this is pretty nuanced stuff, and putting it all in one song was tough. Ariana Grande and the insanely talented ladies of SNL tried to address the complexity of intersectional feminism with this incredibly catchy song. However, when that proved to be too challenging and time-consuming, they bailed. We know women need So instead, they show footage of them frolicking on the beach, basking in lens flares, and a montage of other feminist icons. So instead of writing lyrics, here's us running in the sand. And here's a bunch of lens flares and an old woman's hands. However, contrary to the song's title, they soon realize that maybe it is a feminist song after all. And that's why this is not a feminist song. And like all good social movements, it even comes with its own hashtag. It's witty, utterly charming, and the feminist anthem we never even knew we needed. Number 8. Come Back Barack 
Channeling a 90s R&B boy band, Devon Trey sing this tribute to former President Barack Obama. Every night, I turn the TV on and cry. Well, I cry, yeah, I cry. I say why, I feel like we're all gonna die. Although when it first aired, it was only called Come Back, and they surprised us with this hilarious reveal. So come back, <laughs> the trio fondly reminisces about the good old days and throws out some suggestions for more suitable successors. Heck, they'll even vote for Joe Biden in 2020. I vote for Joe Biden. This wasn't the first time Chance the Rapper and Kenan Thompson collaborated on an Obama-themed musical sketch either. Jingle Barack was even nominated for an Emmy. The last Christmas with Barack still here. However, Come Back Barack went viral on YouTube and won an Emmy for Outstanding Music and Lyrics. Number 7. Sumpin Claus. If you ever thought that Santa was a little judgmental, Sumpin Claus has you covered. Everybody's been naughty, everybody's got flaws. If you've been crossed on Santa's list, here comes Sumpin Claus. Played by SNL treasure Kenan Thompson, this former North Pole employee hands out envelopes of cash to those who've made Santa's naughty list. But you know what I say? Everybody's getting some. Everybody's getting some. Just don't ask him where he got the money. The concept is hilarious, and we couldn't imagine a better actor to pull it off either. We love Cecily Strong and Sashir Zameda giving it their all as his backing singers as well. He sees you when you're sleeping. That's weird. I'm gonna tell you something about it. He hit somebody with that slate. Don't like to talk about it. Sumpin Claus is such a brilliantly bizarre sketch. And like many fans of the show, we would love to revisit this character again. Number 6. I Just Had Sex Yeah, sex is great and all, but have you ever sung about doing it from the rooftops with Grammy-nominated artist Akon? The Lonely Island guys sing about a great night of intercourse with their girlfriends, played by Blake Lively and Jessica Alba respectively here. We also get a cameo from former tennis pro John McEnroe. The guys are pretty pleased with themselves, but the ladies are not so satisfied. To be honest, I'm surprised she even wanted me to do it. Doesn't really make sense. But man, screw it. I ain't one to argue with a good thing. She could be my wife that good. The best 30 seconds of my life. The song is such a banger, though, that even their dissatisfied partners can't help but join in. It's no surprise, really, that the track entered multiple charts around the world, and even went platinum in the US and Australia. Number 5. Do It On My Twin Bed Until this number, it was the guys who dominated the musical digital short sketches. However, after this unforgettable music video, all that changed. Giving us some real pussycat doll vibes, this sketch addresses the awkwardness of getting it on at your parents' house over the holidays. There is a lot to enjoy about this Emmy-nominated sketch, from its catchy tune, hilarious and somewhat relatable lyrics, and, for some at least, Jimmy's rap. But let's be clear, I'm having lots of trouble getting horny here. I want to get down and do my thing, but your childhood bed has antique springs. However, the throwback photos of the cast are an absolute highlight. This is one of our favorite holiday-themed musical sketches, and we can't wait until next Christmas to watch it again. Number 4. Boomers Got the Vax Baby boomers, greatest generation Got all the money, now we got the vaccination Crash the economy three whole times But when it comes to the vax, we the first in line This satirical 90s hip-hop style music video takes aim at the boomer generation, who were at the head of the queue to receive COVID-19 vaccinations. Money stacks, hands 
cats. Arm, vax, no mask. Biggest generation, ain't no stopping me. Never gonna die, drain your social security. The song mocks how many of the same people who downplayed the severity of the virus ended up being the first to get immunized. Rumors got the vax, no rumors, just facts, yeah. Give it up if you're 70 plus. Everyone else getting jealous of us. It also underlines the other advantages that boomers have enjoyed over the decades. Each moment of this sketch is pure genius, and everyone's performance is sensational. Ow, COVID can't touch me now. Low mask and the sore nose poking out. When it's time to pay, I whip the coupons out. Even though I got to send me in the bank account. We guess there may be some begrudging millennials in SNL's writer's room. Well, it gave us this sketch, which is comedy gold. Number 3. Lazy Sunday. Lazy Sunday, wake up in the late afternoon. Call Parnell just to see how he's doing. Hello, what up, Parn? Yo, Sandberg, what's cracking? You thinking what I'm thinking? Party up, man, it's happening. Writers Akiva Schaffer and Yorma Takoni were struggling to get their sketches to air. However, after Lazy Sunday, everything changed. Just hit up Mac Noga and Mac on some cupcakes. No, that bakery's got all about Bob Frosty. I love those cupcakes. This hardcore rap, performed by Andy Samberg and Chris Parnell, chronicles some pretty mundane activities, like hitting up Magnolia Bakery and buying snacks to sneak into a matinee viewing of The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Not only did it put Lonely Island on the map, it also brought attention to a little-known site called YouTube hitting 2 million views in just one week. It became one of the first viral videos on the platform. Who knew that a song about a lazy Sunday would be totally groundbreaking? Number 2. Dick in a Box Arguably, this seductive 90s R&B style holiday tune is the most famous and successful SNL musical digital short. Oh, you know it's Christmas and my heart is open wide. Gonna give you something so you know what's on my mind. Justin Timberlake and Andy Samberg sing about their wildly inappropriate Christmas gifts to their girlfriends. A gift for your special, so take off the towel. Take a look inside, it's my in a box. Although it initially aired uncensored, it was later replaced with a censored version that was bleeped over 16 times. By 2011, they completed the trilogy with follow-up songs Mother Lover and Three Way The Golden Rule. Now hold up, player, what you diggity do in here? However, nothing has seen quite the same level of success as the original. Not only did it become a viral hit, it also won the Emmy for Outstanding Original Music and Lyrics. One. Cut a hole in a box. <laughs> Put your junk in that box. <laughs> Make her open the box. And that's the way you do it. It's like in a box. What makes all of these so great is that they're really catchy tunes, but they're also hilarious. And if you're anything like me, you will have our number one pick stuck in your head for a week after you see it. So let's look through some honorable mentions and then we will name our top SNL music video. Jack Sparrow. Why wouldn't you sing an ode to the captain of the Black Pearl? Natalie's rap. If you enjoyed it the first time, you probably loved Natalie's Rap 2.0 as well. When I was in Harvard, I smoked weed every day. I cheated every test and started all the yay. I got a deaf posse, you got a bunch of dudes. I'll sit right down on your face and take your Kellyanne Conway. The name on everybody's lips was McKinnon after this killer impression. And when they Google just a K, my name will come up before Kanye. Welcome to hell. Saoirse Ronan and the ladies of SNL are here to show you around a woman's world. The creep. We think we'll leave these moves to the lonely island. Don't get to sweating off the pride at a wet do the creep. Oh. And do the creep. Oh. But when you sneak into a 
continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. I'm on a boat featuring T-Pain I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! Everybody look at me cause I'm sailing on a boat! In a parody of cliches often seen in rap videos, Samberg, Akiva Schaffer, and T-Pain aggressively rap about being on a boat. Samberg won the boat trip for three in a cereal box, sadly leaving the Lonely Island's Yorma Takoni out of the fun. I got my swim trucks and my flippin' floppies. I'm flippin' burgers, you at Kinko straight flippin' cabbage. On the boat, however, we enjoy tropes like lavish luxury, constant drinking, and excessive use of expletives. It's no wonder T-Pain was so confused by the premise when he was first approached. Hey, bye, if you can see me now! See me now. Arms red, wide on the summer bell! Gonna fly this boat to the moon somehow! Like Kevin Garnett, anything is possible! Still, the video peaked at number one on the US iTunes chart, was nominated for a Grammy, and also went platinum. In February 2009, it was even the number one video on YouTube. Am I the only one who still jams out to I'm on a boat? And Boombox? A lot of these, actually. Anyway, be sure to let us know which one you love the most in the comments below. Or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.